And then as I finished, well, I was working in the University of, uh, of Costa Rica, I had the opportunity to join Professor Isola at uh, University of Tsukuba as a research student. So I, I worked with him for a year. And after one year as a research student in Japan, I entered the master's program in mathematics education. This is where I graduated this, this year. And given the opportunity to graduate at Tsukuba, I was able to work as a researcher at Chrysler, also with Professor Isola Masami. So this has been my, my short academic and work experience. I just came back to Costa Rica. I arrived to Costa Rica one month ago and I'm starting my work again as a high school teacher from now on. So this is just a short introduction of where I'm located and which is my experience coming to this presentation. Now, in terms of the research itself, what brings us together, I would like to explain why, why the combination of the analysis of textbooks, why using praxeologies, and then the combination with learning trajectories. Um, when the new Japanese course of study was published in 2018, uh, many, many uh, editorial houses in Japan were working on the new textbooks for the implementation of those of that new course of study. So when I arrived to Japan in 2019, I had access to those new textbooks. It was my first time to be able to work with those textbooks. I had access to both the Japanese and English version of those textbooks. And it was my first experience to talk about task sequence, the use of terminology, and specific details about how those textbooks were created. So this was my first interaction with, with Japanese textbooks. This is in 2019. Um, by then, my, my only uh, interaction was with the Japanese textbooks. Uh, at the same time, uh, I was able to participate in as part of the master's program now in, 20, in 2020 uh, in the intensive course given by Professor Miyakawa as part of the University of Tsukuba. I had initially in Costa Rica a short uh, introduction or work with French didactics, but it was until this course that I was able to see completely the context of analysis and research in this particular way of working. And it was at that point that I had access not only to the work by Professor Miyakawa, but also by a particular uh, article from Takeuchi and Shinno that same year that had a very interesting analysis of uh, uh, textbooks, particularly an international comparison by using praxeologies. So this is, I'm mentioning this because it was one of the of the articles that gave the inspiration with the work with Professor Miyakawa to continue with this idea of combining the analysis of textbooks with the praxeologies. And then finally last year, I was able to make a proposal of a framework of analysis using both the praxeologies and the learning trajectories. By that point, the idea was to include the study of the task sequence and the, um, the composition of, of the textbooks. Um, this was a presentation that was done in the Autumn Research Conference for the Japanese Society of Mathematics Education. So as you can see, uh, I'm trying to give a small context on why then this combination that came finally into the article that you see today. So definitely completely located by my experience or my arrival to, to Japan. So this is in terms of the framework itself. Now in terms of the context of analysis, or in this case, the focus or of, of the article itself is the domain of measurements. And um, I think that measurements came in 
perfectly for, for this particular um, analysis because uh, I was able to identify that there were some um, necessities in terms of identifying which was the organization of that domain. And this was something that I was very interested on making the analysis, particularly using both the praxeologies and the learning trajectories. And also there was discussions about tasks. And uh, uh, this was something that was also bringing in a lot of information with me that how, how the tasks were um, structured, what type of tasks were involved. And then there was problems involving the types of tasks, right? If it, the researchers were talking about standard procedures, someone talking about conceptual pr principles. So this came in into a, a good time to then make a, an analysis of how this particular domain was structured. There were concepts like partitioning, unit iteration, transitivity that were very important for measurements, for the domain of measurements that could be included in this analysis. And then finally, um, the, the main researchers involved in this domain were talking about composition and distribution of tasks over time. So it, was, it looked like it was a good opportunity to make the analysis and try to give some information or in, in terms of, of that composition, particularly trying to compare different education contexts. So I would like to say that the, the need of that analysis in the domain of measurements with my arrival to Japan gave the, the combination to, to try this, the, this analysis that came through into this final article. So in terms of um, the theoretical framework itself, as you know, the praxeologies are one of the tools that are used in the anthropological theory of the didactics, particularly um, the insight itself, uh, analyzing the transformation of knowledge and practice in, from one institution to another. In, of course, in, I'm not going into a, an, a, a big, huge analysis of institutions, but in particularly one that will be the transformation from the official into the implemented curriculum. A, particularly in, in the practice, right? Making the analysis with the textbooks. I, I, of course, given that I'm making the uh, praxeological analysis, I'll have to focus on its components, giving the analysis in tasks, the technique, the technology and theory. And uh, this, in this context, of, of course, the, the combination gives what I was needing, right? Making a, a, an analysis of the composition itself of the task and how, and what, what is the, the reason behind the selection of that transposition. Uh, as you're gonna see later on in my, in the analysis itself, I, I made a, a focus on particularly on the practice block. Um, I focused on that, even though I made the, the analysis completely right from the task all the way to the theory, uh, I will focus on the practice block, particularly to the analysis in the thinking levels. So this in terms of how the praxeologies came through and what I'm using for the analysis itself. And uh, in terms of the learning trajectories, uh, what I would like to say is that the, the biggest focus is that the, the learning trajectory gave a description of a path, but in this case of the student's thinking in a particularly uh, defined domain. As you saw before, the mathematical domain will be measurements. In this case, the learning trajectory is fit perfectly for the praxeological analysis because uh, it gives, or this path includes a hypothesis of instructional tasks and also includes the progression of thinking levels. So in that case, the praxeological analysis will help to identify the, the tasks in a particular context. And then the hypothesized path will be able to uh, add some additional information, particularly given uh, a description of the progression of the levels of thinking. Uh, I will talk about which 
particular um, path I chose for, for this analysis, but this, this gave uh, a clear description, particularly for the, um, for the domain of measurements in the introduction of uh, length. So I, I will talk about which were those levels and how the learning goal for the introduction of length was defined. So this was, these are the two, the two frameworks that came in together in order to make this analysis. So the article itself discusses the praxeological analysis first and then how that combined with the developmental progression of the levels of thinking came through as the base, the base for, this, for this article. So using those two um, theoretical frameworks as a base, the three questions that were proposed for, for this article, well, first of all, which are the types of tasks provided regarding in this particular case for length measurement in each country? For this first question, then the analysis is based on the praxeological analysis. Then the second question would be thinking about once the types of tasks are analyzed and then the techniques associated to them, um, how the practice blocks are located according to the progression of thinking levels. So the second question would be, which is the distribution, the particular distribution of those practice blocks, again, for each country. And then finally, a question regarding the needs in the measurement domain. As you saw at the very beginning, I was talking about there's a need about the composition of the domain itself. So the final question is, well, what is the proposed in instruction sequence? What is the expectation given the proposal given by each, by each country? So which is the order in the instruction sequence? So those are the three, three questions that were posed at the very beginning for this particular research. So let's, let's discuss a little bit of the methodolo methodological process in order to answer those three questions. So first of all, in terms of the countries, as you saw in the title, the countries are China, Japan, and Malaysia. So the, the research itself was uh, posed for only East and Southeast Asian countries. This decision was defined particularly on the international cooperation closely related with APEC and other activities in Southeast Asia. The second condition is that given that there was a, um, an objective of focusing on the uh, transition from the official to the implemented curriculum, there was a need to be sure that the textbooks, it was a textbook based country with a national agency. This was very important because we were, uh, we were expecting that the textbook was certified in order to be used in the country. Then another detail is what, that we were avoiding using textbooks that were written in English. So the idea was to uh, leave, leave behind of the many, many comparisons that were done in the past that were focused only on English-based textbooks. And also it was very important for us that those textbooks were available to all the students without paying, having a free access of the textbooks. Uh, finally, a categorization of the countries was done by the ranking in, in PISA that gave us an indicator of the education system performance. So this is how then those three countries were, were selected. Um, in terms of the praxeological analysis itself, the, it was needed a reference, in this case, what uh, in ATD is called a reference epistemological model. Um, in, in, this was needed particularly because the, um, there was various models that could be imposed by each country and we needed to have a specific guidance, a, co a coherent organization of the knowledge for this particular domain. Um, so the complementary perspective of, in this case, the reference to, to make the analysis for this praxeological analysis 
was taken from two, two different um, perspectives from the theory of measurement, in this case, the realistic view of measurement and the view of the mathematical theories of measurement. This was reviewed previously uh, before the, the analysis was, was made in order to find the, um, not only the categories for the analysis, but also what was the expectation for the organization of the measurement knowledge before going into the analysis of the textbooks themselves. I'm not going through the whole description of the process, but I would like to say that after the examination of those theories, um, there were three themes, particularly attributes, numerical representation and estimations that were the main discussions. And after or behind those three main uh, sections, eight categories were identified. I decided to underline some of the keywords for each of those categories, for example, the comparison, mapping, the use of relations in order to decide if something is greater than or less than, the use of instruments for the measurement, so the use of the unit, errors. So in, in particular, this gave eight categories for the analysis itself. This, again, as a complete reference for the analysis without following the imposition by each country. So giving uh, a coherent um, organization for the expectation that came later, that is the analysis itself of the type of tasks and the praxeological analysis itself. So the, the reference epistemological model was needed for the analysis that came for question number one. And in terms of the learning trajectory, it was also needed to have some hypothetical path that will give a guide for the analysis itself. So in terms of length measurement in early years, we used a learning trajectory that was reviewed and also improved by Slagy and all. So this is a learning trajectory that had seven levels. Um, for the article itself, those seven levels were summarized and um, presented as, as you see here in this table. So what this gives is the hypothetical path for the uh, development or the introduction of length measurement in early years, as you can see, begins with a first level that only um, focuses on recognizing the property of length as an attribute and goes through the direct and indirect comparison in level two and level three, either by physically aligning the two objects or comparing the length through a third object for the case of indirect comparison. And then follows through going up in those levels according to ordering objects according to length, using the units in the way of end, end to end by uh, uh, placing the units together. And then in the final two thinking levels, the introduction now of an official unit, standard unit, and the operations behind it, especially the composition and the composition of lens. Um, so as you can see, the path is described in seven levels. This was the guide that we used to uh, make the, the analysis of the organization of the thinking levels, the progression of thinking levels according to the analysis. So in, in summary, we will say that then the reference epistemological model was the guidance for the praxeological analysis and the path, the hypothetical learning trajectory that you see in this page gave us the reference for the progression of the thinking levels. Again, this is length measurement in early years, um, in particularly, depending on the country, first and second year in primary school. So let's, given that this is the, the structure then that was proposed for the, for the analysis itself, let's, let's see some of the, of the results. Um, I, 
I would like to describe several several of the results. As a, as you see here on the right side, the the guidance was to solve all the all the problems that were proposed on on the on the textbooks, and the categorization of types of tasks was followed by the eight categories that came from the reference epistemological model. So as you can see, originally we had eight categories. So we totaled on eight different types of tasks. Uh, the solutions or the way of solving those problems um, was followed by the suggestions given by the textbook themselves, either um, by their own examples or what it was interpreted from the textbook. And as you can see, the by focusing ex exclusively on the problems related to length, we, we have here each column, the description for China, Japan, and Malaysia. And uh, for each type of, of task, you will be able to see which is the composition for those particular tasks. In something that could be quite normal to happen, something that we were expecting is that um, the textbooks will have some type of focus on using um, tools to measuring with a standard device. As you can see, uh, a high percentage of the tasks was located in that particular type of task. But then we were able to find particular um, composition of countries. For example, in the case of, of Japan, there was a, a very big amount of tasks that were considered for the combination or difference of lengths, particularly the focus on operations and also the categorization of lengths in which, which is longer and by how many units, for example. In the case of um, Malaysia and China, it was also interesting to identify that there was a big amount of tasks that were uh, located in approximations, in this case of the um, concept of, it's not an exact measurement, but how can you approximate the exact length of objects? So as you can see, this initial, um, analysis was able to give us the description of the introduction of length in the three countries and some of the categories followed by what was proposed by the reference epistemological model. And of course, this is not the only uh, part of the analysis. You begin by having the types of tasks, but also there is a way of solving the task in this particular uh, terminology will be the techniques. So in, in this um, case, the techniques were defined by the solution methods or the approaches that were identified uh, during the analysis of the types of tasks. Um, there are some cases in which each task has more than one technique. So as you can see here, those techniques are, are described. And what I would like to say is that there are some conceptual principles of measurement that were included here. For example, the iteration or the conservation of length. And also, of course, the use of the trans transitive property in order to, to make a comparison. So in, uh, in this particular section of the analysis, those principles were explicitly uh, used. So what we have at this point during the analysis, the praxeological analysis is that, of course, the tasks, the types of tasks are identified and then the technique or the method, the, the solution method is um, attached to it directly. Uh, of course, the praxeological analysis itself goes, continues through the description of the, te the technique, the technology and the theory. In terms of time today, I won't uh, describe the four, the four steps completely, but I would like to say that in terms of finding 
the, the results for question number one, um, this is the first uh, results that we, that we received in terms of types of tasks and for techniques. Again, the types of tasks were eight, and for each type of task, depending on the cases, we had a distribution for the techniques, okay? So I, I will show some examples of how the, the analysis was done, the categorization, but this is the initial description of the results in terms of the types of tasks and techniques found for this particular domain in the introduction of length in early years. After this, then once the task was identified and the technique associated with it was also available, came then the, the second part of the analysis. In this case, trying to answer question number two. And in this particular case was, what is the distribution of the practice blocks? So given that the analysis is based on practice blocks, then the pair type of task and technique were uh, analyzed to locate them according to a thinking level. So let's, let's see, this is the full, the full dis, dis, uh, distribution of each country. On the left side, so on the left side, you can see the seven thinking levels that were predefined by Slagy et al. And then given the conditions for each level in this um, progression, then each pair, each pair of type of task and technique were located on each thinking level. So what happened in this particular case is that depending on the way of solution and the description of the thinking level, each of those practice blocks were assigned and there were cases in which some of the thinking levels were not included in some of those practice blocks so that's why it's shown as a zero and uh, all of those practice blocks were able to be located if they were from task number one all the way to task number eight and um, given this distribution what the, what this means is that for example this four means that there was four problems that were classified as task type five with technique six that were located in the thinking level six. Um, this representation itself uh, will be able to show the amount of practice blocks per thinking level according to each country. But we realized that it was a little bit difficult to identify immediately the distribution of the practice blocks. So we decided to make this, this representation in which all the number of practice blocks are summarized per thinking level. And what this helped is that gave a, a general impression of where the practice blocks were located according to country. So for example, in the case of, of China, you can see that 62%, almost 63% of the practice blocks were located in level number six. Um, for, for each country, of course, the distribution varies, but this particular section in which you see that in the thinking level four, you have a particular um, group of percentages in China and Malaysia, and then in thinking level sex for both, well, for the three of the countries, and particularly thinking level seven for Japan gives a better, a better summary in terms of where those practice blocks are grouped and distributed per country. Now, in terms of why this came through, uh, as we were um, analyzing the textbook itself, we realized that both China and Malaysia had lots of uh, tasks that were focused on ordering. That's why you see this high percentage in both. In particular case of the thinking level six, it was more about the use of the units and measuring. So this is also 
something that we were expecting, particularly by using the device for measuring that in this case was the ruler. And then finally, for thinking level seven, the case of, Jap of Japan is particularly important because in thinking level number seven, there is a focus on the operations and the use of different units. And as I'm gonna discuss at the very end of this presentation, the case of Japan focusing on operations, the, the addition uh, with different units and the combination with units gave this high percentage of practice blocks. So this was used, this re representation helped to identify what was the distribution of the practice blocks in a more general way to find where those practice blocks were gathered. So this gave a, a, a better a better description of the distribution. Uh, let's let's see some examples. So maybe the examples will will help to see how the categorization process was done. Uh, again, there was three three steps needed here, right? We need to identify the type of task. We need to identify the technique, and once the practice block is located, then where in the think on level this is located. So for example, this is a, uh, an exercise that is proposed an example of problem from the Chinese textbook. This is in second grade. And as you can see here, the discussion is to use an arbitrary unit. The arbitrary unit is something that in Chinese they call sha, that is using their hand, their, their hand open in order to make the description of a length. Of course, given the case that the sha for the kid is smaller than from the teacher, then the description of total units of this arbitrary unit is different. So in this particular case, then the task is classified as representing the length with an object, uh, with a number by repeatedly placing an object in this particular case using the sha as the repetition, as an iteration for this length. Uh, given that this is an end-to-end -end process where the units are laid, in this case, an arbitrary unit, then that's why that uh, this particular practice block is located in thinking level five. So as you can see, then the process begins by identifying the type of task, then the technique associated with it, and given the combination of them, then the location in the thinking level. So this is one, one example for the case of China. Let's see another example for the case of Malaysia. So in this case, as you can see, they have a, a pen here, and the idea would be to state which is the length of this pen. Uh, so students need to try to answer this. As you can see, there is a device that is shown, in this case, a ruler. So given that the ruler is here, then this is a type of task that requires the standard device, in this case, a ruler. This is a type of task number four. And given that it depends on the instrument itself, then the technique is instrumental, okay? Given that combination, then the thinking level is number six. In this particular case, using a standard unit that was the centimeter and the repetition of it in order to make the um, measurement, okay? So this is a type of task number four with a technique five located in the thinking level number six. As we discussed, Previously, there were many, many tasks that included this type of activities, particularly using standard devices. Okay. And then the final example that I brought today is an example from the Japanese textbook. Um, this is uh, a case in which the students need to find which of these two pencils is longer. In this particular case, it's a comparison that is being made. So this is a type of task number one. And as you can see, the, 
way or the technique to find that particular solution is a direct physical comparison. In this, in this case, aligning the two pencils uh, that requires having them at the same initial position. So given that this is a direct length comparison, this was located in thinking level number two. So these are only three examples of, of the whole analysis, but as you can see, then the process began with the praxeological analysis, in this case, the task type and technique, and then followed by locating that particular practice block in a thinking level. So I decided that those three examples were, were a good idea to, to discuss here in, the, um, in, this, in, this, in, in this presentation so you can see the categorization process itself. Of course, in terms of time, it's not possible to show all of them, but at least you, you can see what was the process of analysis. So this is in terms of answering question number one and number two that involves the praxeological analysis and uh, later the um, thinking levels. In terms of the um, question number three, in order to start closing the presentation, uh, we were very interested in terms of the order of the instruction sequence. In this particular case, what happened with the practice blocks and which was the order in which those practice blocks came in the textbooks. Uh, so what we did is that we focused only on the introduction of the meter. So as soon as we found the standard unit meter, then the instruction sequence stopped. In this case, we did a simplified model just to see what was the instruction sequence proposed by each, by each country. So the idea was to see what happened from the introduction of the concept of length all the way to the introduction of meter itself. So as you can see here, we have the initial point of the instruction sequence for each country and then how each country goes through different thinking levels until the meter is introduced, okay? So what we found out is that in all three countries, there is a movement through different thinking levels. So we have practice blocks in, for example, in China in level five, then goes to level six and then goes back into level four. So we found out that this was quite normal in all of the countries, something that we were expecting, particularly because the thinking levels are, no, are they're normally um, coming back into some of those exercises that were done before. So it's something that we were expecting, but the instruction sequence that was proposed or suggested by each country was different. As you can see here, particularly the case of Japan and Malaysia, they do begin in a lower thinking level compared to the Chinese case. And also the number of practice blocks required to reach the uh, standard unit meter is also different. And so this gave us uh, a general idea of what was this uh, sequence or that order that was followed uh, in order to arrive to the, to the uh, standard unit meter. Now, this, it's also important here to say that in some cases, for example, in the case of Japan, this sequence is not necessarily on one single year. We were able to analyze the sequence um, from, chapter, from one chapter to another. So if there was a transition between chapters, then it was also included in this analysis. Um, so this, of course, this transition gave a, a general des a description of, of that sequence, but also, uh, provided the organization that we were trying, we were seeking to, to achieve in this particular case, summarized only until the unit meter. Um, cases where there were practice exercises or exercises at the end of the chapter were not included. The description is just a proposal by each country in order to achieve the unit meter as part of its instruction sequence. So this gave again, uh, an ordered description that was not accessible during the 
progression of thinking levels. This is the best way that we found to describe the transition between practice blocks according to one specific objective that in this particular case was the introduction of the unit meter. Given then the, the description of that organization, I would like to just close by saying that there were several characteristics of the organization that we found out uh, they were shared on all three countries, particularly uh, very strongly the, the use of ways, how, how to measure and understand the use of rulers. This is something that the standard devices we were expecting. This is something that we knew that came by. And it's not a surprise that this is something normal in all three countries, but we were also happy to identify other um, conceptual principles used on that process. It's not only about using the ruler, but also understanding other concepts um, that go with it. Number two, the also another difference that we, or characteristic that we found is that there was a, a coordination with standard units. It was a little bit different according to each country, particularly in the case of um, China, they introduce first centimeter and then they go directly into meters. In the case of Japan, there was an additional discussion of millimeter first. So centimeter, then millimeter, and then the introduction to meter. So there is, there is an interaction between uh, sub and superordinate units that is important. And this is something that was also discussed by researchers previously that there is difficulties by students to discuss the interaction between, between those standard units. So this is something that we were able to identify also as part of the organization of the length measurement. And finally, the, the results that were related to the approximation of lengths or errors. This is something that uh, was particularly interesting in terms of that textbook in China and Malaysia. And it, it's something that was proposed previously that there is by the nature of the measurement itself, the possibility of course of having some errors in the measurement process and approximations are um, the estimation of lengths is something that should be included in the process. So this is something that we were very happy to identify and that the um, original categorization was expecting to, to be able to find. Um, so this, in terms of a general characteristic of the organization of, of the domain. And finally, I would like to say that there's still some um, improvements that could be done, particularly combining other uh, domains and sectors. And of course, doing the same comparison, but now not between countries, but within the same country. In this case, giving teachers the opportunity to make the analysis such that their instruction sequences are improved according to comparisons among textbooks in their own, in their same country. And something that also was um, discussed during the process of writing the article is that an analysis of the task duration, in this case, uh, other types of parameters for the analysis, not only the amount of types of tasks per test book should be ideal in order to better understand the progressions. Uh, this will, of course, uh, we will need to include additional observations and also watch the actual implementation of the teachers, not only um, the expected implementation through textbooks that could give more, more information according to which was the final uh, instruction sequence followed by teachers. With this then short comment about what comes next, I will show you the references that were used for this particular presentation. And I hope that this gave you a general impression of how the research was proposed and some of the details about trying to make a combination between the analysis of the praxeological analysis and making the analysis through the developmental progression of thinking levels. So thank you very much for sending me out.